conclusion. And this is what Operation Gladio would do. And, and Kurt Nemo's article gets into that, how NATO, and again, I'm not defending the Russians during the Cold War. It's that both sides did dirty stuff, okay? NATO did hundreds of bombings and shootings from Germany to Italy, from France to Ukraine, you name it, into, into non-NATO countries at the time, where if, if, if communists started getting too popular, they'd shoot people and blame it on them or bomb people and blame it on them. If right-wing groups got too popular and they didn't like where they were going, they would shoot people and blame it on them. Uh, if mainline groups, I mean, they did this over and over again. This got declassified by the Italian government 14 years ago and then even more about three years ago, and the U.S. government had to admit it. NATO was involved, the British were involved, the Germans were involved. They called them stay-behind networks. After World War II, uh, a lot of the Nazi-held areas, the U.S. just took over the Nazi networks that were there, like Ukraine, uh, Western Ukraine, and continued to use them to carry out terror attacks, but they were being directed by the West. So that's how this operates, and... People need to be made aware of that. And I, I watched how this went, how the police tried to stand down so they wouldn't look bad to give them the political support. Then they start getting shot, and our media is calling them freedom fighters, and precision, you know, throwing Molotov cocktails at police cars, burning them up, and very serious situation. And look, if the Ukrainians want to overthrow their government, that's their business, but the West is in there stirring it up overthrowing an elected government and now putting people in even worse so the EU can suck them dry. This is the type of stuff they'll do in America. They will commit mass shootings and blame it on the Tea Party. You can see all the writing on the wall. They will commit new Oklahoma cities and blame it on us. And I'm just saying, it's all they've got left. The problem is they know our people are everywhere and are going to run with video cameras to the next Oklahoma City, to the next mass shooting. They know myself or my reporters will march in to the press conferences with the evidence. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. I'm part of a new TSA initiative to screen certain high-risk travelers at their homes before they even set foot in an airport. High risk? Really? <laughs> well, you're a white, gun-owning, 20-something Christian man who rode in Ron Paul in two elections and has a house positively chock-full of anti-government propaganda. So, 
Since you fit the domestic terrorist profile to a T, the lovely folks at the TSA just wanted me to come down here so I can make sure that you're safe to travel. Now, I assure you, this will make the process at the airport much smoother. And if everything checks out, you won't even have to do a cavity search there. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and take care of that right here in the privacy and convenience of your own bathroom. What? Dick Johnson! Next time on Dick Johnson. And that was a clip from Dick Johnson, the winning entry to the Resist NSA TSA Tyranny. Now we have the director of that film, David West. He's going to be talking to us about his film and his future projects. Thanks for joining us, David. Hey, how's it going? Very good, very good. So tell us about your entry. What motivated you to get involved in the contest and also what angle you took to portray the TSA? Uh, you know, it's funny. Actually, when I first heard about the contest, I had this great idea for this dark little drama I was going to make about uh, the NSA. And then I read the rules a little further and I saw they were looking for satire. And I was like, ah, comedy's not really my thing. And I actually wasn't going to enter. Um, my entry was super last minute. Um, right before Christmas, a friend of mine, uh, my good friend Chuck Horton, he gave me the idea that uh, he said, hey, I got this idea. I really think you should do it. And um, it's funny because usually I, I don't really take ideas from people, but uh, he told me I should make a film about uh, a TSA agent who just shows up at people's houses to search them before flights. Yeah. And I started thinking about that kind of over Christmas. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. And uh, so I, I decided, okay, I'll do it. And I started kind of brainstorming ideas. And uh, but it was Christmas time, so I was really busy with uh, family and stuff. And it wasn't until like January 1st or 2nd that I was actually able to sit down and write a script. So basically, um, you know, I, I'd, come, I'd figured out I was going to make it about this real sort of a sexual predator TSA agent mm -hmm. and give it kind of a 70s exploitation film slash cop show vibe. Yeah, um, and the, I, I think just, the handlebar mustache really helped as well. <laughs> that that was perfect. You know, actually, that was kind of, um, I, well, the whole film was last minute. Like I said, you know, we made the whole thing from scripting to turning it in like 15 minutes before the deadline. It was less than six days. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, Travis Wolf, my lead actor who plays Dick Johnson and uh, a, a good friend of mine I've known forever who's uh, in most of my films, um, he... Uh, he had a beard going into it and he was like, ah, I don't really want to shave. And I was like, dude, you should do it. You should do it. And, uh, you know, I don't want to push him too hard cause I'm not paying him or anything, but, uh, finally he just did it and shaved it. And you know, it's a $10,000 handlebar now, I guess. So it, it really, yeah, it's, really it's, helped. It's definitely <laughs> worth, worth every penny. And we really enjoy that. You were in the top three along with joy camp and also the trendy TSA guys. So you guys have some great entries and definitely, uh, it was a very good take at comedy. I'm not sure how, how often you do that? You say that's really not your forte, but we really couldn't tell. It was some great, great <laughs> stuff you came up with. So if you mind, don't mind me prying a little bit, you know, what are your plans uh, to do with that $10,000? Um, well, the first thing, of course, and I'm splitting it up uh, kind of between the crew a bit, um, you know, giving everyone a cut. Uh, uh, the bulk of the money, though, um, I'm keeping to kind of use for future production purposes. We will most likely be buying a new camera in the coming months. Um, uh, well, we will be buying a new camera in the coming months. I'm not 100% sure what yet. Most likely, uh, we shot this film on a Panasonic GH2. Most likely a Panasonic GH4, which will come out in a couple months. Um, but you never know, there might be something new that comes out. Camera technology advances at an amazing rate. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get some new, some new equipment that will help us keep making films for almost nothing. Great, great. And that's what it's all about, you know, because people, they see the show and they say, you know, what happens? You know, you have these guys on the show or, you know, you go after you fight the TSA, you fight the NSA. This is what happens. You know, we got guys like yourself, other people we've been able to, uh, fortunate enough to promote, people from our previous contest. I'm from a previous contest. So that it goes all around full circle. This is what your money goes to. These are what your dollars go to when you go to 
PrisonPlanet.tv or anything else is to help independent filmmakers and other people who are just trying to get the message of liberty out there. So, David, tell me uh, about some of your other projects. I saw one of your other films, uh, The State of Jefferson. It has a little more serious vibe, but it's definitely enjoyable. Yeah, that was another thing um, I did for a contest. I've been entering a, a lot of contests um, recently. You know, I sort of pick ones that I can, if I can, I try to pick contests where I can make something that sort of furthers my ideology. Like, you know, your guys' contest was an excellent example of that. Um, and ones that I, I feel like I might have a chance of winning. So that was for one about making a, uh, a short film about where you're from and where you live. And so I live in Southern Oregon, uh, the part of Oregon that has tried to secede and form their own state. And I grew up in the part of California that you know has tried to secede as well and form their own state uh, along with Southern Oregon called the state of Jefferson. So um, I put that together because I knew that uh, you know it was something that would, there's been, there's been a big kind of insurgent uh, in the state of Jefferson movement again recently. So I wanted to kind of help out with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that one, that, that one's not super dramatic, but yeah, a little more serious than Dick Johnson. But most of my other films are actually kind of action drama oriented. You know, the, the last really big short film that I did was, uh, last summer I made a film called Liberation, and it's basically about, it was actually for another competition for a, a Christian film competition that we most likely got barred from because of uh, the film's kind of overt libertarianism. Mm. But uh, uh, yeah, it's called Liberation and it was about a military police officer, uh, sort of a secret police kind of thing. It's almost like a, a sort of Nazi allegory going on in America, but uh, it's about this military police officer in a dystopian near future who starts breaking people out of a, uh, a prison camp. And, um, it t I, I was pretty happy with it considering the fact that we made it in, uh, you know, the whole thing was made in like about two weeks or less. It was shot and edited all in a week Wow! and uh, on a budget of less than $800. And it turned out, turned out pretty good. I, I would say it's probably my best film to date. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so kind of moving forward, that's what I want to do is just action drama type stuff. Although I do have kind of a dark sense of humor that does come into play from time to time. Yeah, we, we saw that. Well, <laughs> well, Dick wasn't too too dark, but it yeah, definitely Dick, had Dick a. wasn't too dark. It, it definitely had a, I guess, kind of a, a racy kind of tone, is how Alex described it. Now, David, going forward, uh, we come to the end of our of our program tonight. But you know, what would you say to anybody to encourage them? Because I always tell people when I go out in the streets, or even when I do the show, I say it's not all about being on the radio or being on TV in a suit. You can do things like what you do. You know, you go out there with your friends, you make films, things like what Joy Camp does. They go out there and they make these satire pieces. What would you do to encourage? What would you say to somebody to encourage them to pursue the uh, the act of liberty? Uh, I would just tell them use use whatever talents. You have. I mean, um, if people use what they're good at to further the cause of liberty, you know, it'll, it'll do it'll do more good than if they try to, you know, think, oh, I can only do this kind of activism or that kind of activism. I mean, I like to think that I have some gifts as a storyteller and a filmmaker. So that's what I'm trying to use. I think the film is an incredibly powerful medium, you know, and if I can if I can be successful at launching a career as a as, you know, a, a bona fide filmmaker and, you know, kind of. Uh, as I like to say, take the libertarian conspiracy to rule the world and leave everyone alone to Hollywood. Um, you know, I, I think it could be incredibly effective. You know, you can win a lot of people over through that. So I, I would just say, yeah, use use your talents. You know, if you're a filmmaker, uh, make films that further the cause of liberty. If you're a journalist, do that. If um, you know, if uh, just whatever your talents are. Yeah, wh whatever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Anything, you know? Exactly, because we see uh, even sometimes athletes, you know, we have the, the InfoWars skateboards, just whatever your talent is, that's what you need to do. It's, if it's making t-shirts, do that. Make, go on the streets and make videos with your friends, just whatever. Just do whatever you can to further the cause of liberty, uh, to talk about topics that you're interested in, even if you have to do it in a satirical way. Just do it some way that it's digestible to a mass audience. So David West, Buck the System at Facebook.com. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. And as I told David, when you support us, we support guys like David. We support guys like Joy Camp, guys like Project Veritas, anybody who enters the contest. I was in a contest. So when you go to prisonplanet.tv and you get yourself a subscription, that's what your money goes to. When you go to the InfoWars shop and you pick up the new Molon Labe shirts, when you get the fluoride shirts, when you get whatever, anything that you get here at this operation goes not only back into the operation to help us new 
build new sets and things like that, but also goes to independent filmmakers, journalists, people out there who are really trying to get the word out. So get a PrisonPlanet.tv subscription today.